Hello students a hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is nupur sharma and today we are going to discuss two beautiful poems dust of snow and fire and ice you know who wrote these poems these two poems were written by robert lee frost who was quite a nature lover you know he loved nature so much so that he has mentioned nature in these two poems he has mentioned how the nature can protect you how the nature can even destroy you now let's move further in this poem we are going to have an overview a small overview then we are going to line by line explain the poem then summary we are going to discuss the word meanings poetic devices and then the central theme of the poem now dust of snow is a beautiful short poem written by robert lee frost as i already told you robert lee frost was an american poet he was an american poet and he was a lover of nature we can really see his love for nature in these two poems this poem tells that even a simple moment has a large impact and significance yes a simple moment can have a large and significant impact on your lives you can take an example for example today is your exam okay your mood is not so great because you are quite skeptical that how your exam is going to go you are sitting in a very grim mood and suddenly what happens a beautiful baby comes in front of you and he gives you a smile you know a smile can go a long way that smile melts your heart yes this happens a simple moment has a beautiful significance on your life on your day it can have now let's read that how robert lee frost was impacted by a simple moment before doing that we are going to discuss on myths and superstitions it's a very interesting topic okay we are going to talk on that now in the first image we can see a black cat in india when a black cat crosses your way what happens people tell you oh my god the black cat has crossed your way now nothing will happen you know the work for which you are going it's not going to be successful you're not going to be successful you know you are just you just sit at your home okay you do not cross this road because a black cat will disrupt your work now in the second image we can see a crow crow is generally you know compared with death okay you know on a particular days in india the crow is fed the crow is fed food because it is believed that if you feed the crow the food will reach the ancestors now it's a good thing it's a good thing to feed the birds but we can see the crow has been linked with death in the third image we can see the eye is flickering the flickering of the eye is also considered as a bad omen you know it is considered as a bad omen because they say that i, I know i don't know that there is a, a link between left eye and right eye if your la left eye blinks then uh, it's good if right eye blinks it's bad i don't know uh, much about it but yes sneezing if somebody sneezes you're going for a good work okay but somebody sneezes oh my god it's a bad omen do not go out of the house go after 5 10 minutes okay wait have sugar or have water then leave the place then the itching in the palm the itching in the palm tells you that money is going to come if your right palm itches it means money is going to come if your left palm itches it means the money is going to go away no do you really believe in these myths and superstitions but yeah a lot of people do believe in that okay so we can't help it but yes myths and superstitions do exist now let's move on to the poem the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had rode now i'll explain you why was i talking about myths and superstitions now in this poem we are going to talk about two superstitions we are going to talk about a crow and a hemlock tree we have read about a crow and a hemlock tree crow and hemlock tree are generally considered as the symbols of doom yes they are considered as symbols of doom doom means destruction now crow is compared to death as i already told you and a hemlock tree a hemlock tree is what a hemlock tree is a poisonous tree 
it's a poisonous tree with white flowers okay so it is also not considered to be a good thing both of these things are negative things now what happens the way a crow the poet is saying that way a crow in a manner the crow shook down on him actually dusted on him the dust of snow the dust of snow means the particles of snow dust of snow means the particles of snow now what does the poet say from a hemlock tree okay the crow is sitting on a hemlock tree and he has you know dusted some of the snow on the poet has given my heart the poet is saying it has given his heart a change of mood suddenly the mood of the poet changes i saved some part of a day i had ruled he says that this thing this thing that has happened it has saved some part of a day i had ruled ruled means wasted now if i tell you the literal meaning of this literally the poet wants to say that he was just crossing okay he was crossing and suddenly what happened a crow was sitting on a tree and he dusted some snow on him okay and because of that thing it has changed the heart of the poet it has changed the mood of the poet and it has saved some part of the day that he had wasted regretting he has wasted it regretting maybe maybe poet's day did not go well now maybe the poet has wasted all his day complaining he had wasted all his day complaining he had wasted all his day regretting but now because of this thing because a crow shook down on him something cold he feels the touch of it and he feels elated he is happy because our poet is an optimistic person he is not a pessimist now i'll teach you who is an optimistic person and who is a pessimistic person now our poet is an optimist he is not a pessimist who is an optimist it's a glass of water now what will an optimist say an optimist will say the glass is half full whereas the pessimist will say that the glass is half empty the optimist person an optimist person always looks at the brighter sides of the things whereas an pessimist he looks at always the darker side of things he is not happy with anything but our poet because he is an optimist he was not bothered by the crow and the hemlock tree the symbols of doom in fact he was very happy now let's move further we are going to discuss the summary of this poem the poet is upset and sitting under the hemlock tree suddenly a crow sitting on the tree shakes the particles of snow from the tree which fall on the poet as we have already seen that the particles of snow you know the particles of snow the crow uh, shakes the particles of snow on the poet the soft and cold touch of snow changes the poet's mood from sad to happy earlier our poet was very sad but now this small gesture has made him happy he starts feeling soothed and refreshed he is soothed he feels comfortable he is comfortable and he is refreshed in this way a simple moment proves to be very significant and saves the poet's rest of the day from being wasted and held in regret he had planned that he is going to waste all his day regretting and sulking in a corner but that did not happen this poem tells that even a simple moment has a large impact and significance the poet has mentioned crow and hemlock tree in this poem crow signifies signifies his depressive and sorrowful mood as i already told you that the poet was not feeling well he was in a depressive and sorrowful mood he was not very happy so the crow is quite a symbol for that it is a symbol for his mood of his bad mood and the hemlock tree is a poisonous tree 
both of these significa signify that poet was not in a good mood he was not in a good mood so he describes the dark depressive and bitter side of nature to present his similar mood okay his bad mood is represented by the crow and the depressive nature of the of the nature the depressive nature of the nature the darkened nature is represented by the hemlock tree to represent his mood okay to you know form a similarity okay to compare crow and hemlock tree is being used now in such a sad depressive mood the poet was sitting under a hemlock tree a crow sitting on the same tree shook off the dust i e small particles of snow that remain on the surface of the snowfall on the poet the simple action changed the poet's mood that this simple action it was a very simple action some students may ask that okay what happened okay it was just snow now it was just a little bit of snow and it fell on the you know poet the the poet must have felt you know a cold touch why is he so happy it is he is happy because it's just a small thing but he was wasting his day he was not very happy now this thing changed his mood okay so it is quite significant for him he realized that he had just wasted a part of his day repenting he had wasted his day he was repenting he was sulking he was complaining that oh my god my day is not going so good and being lost in sorrow he was lost in sorrow he was quite depressive he was sad but the change in his mood made him realize that he should utilize the rest of the day in some useful activity yes sometimes this happens when we are not feeling well when we are very sad we just what do we do we just start sulking we sit in a corner we are not very happy you know because the mental state the mental state you know it uh, puts an effect on the physical body as well you know when we are not mentally feeling well when we are in a sad mood we do not want to do anything we cannot stand ourselves you know we feel very depressive and our body also reacts in the same way so he was doing like that but his spirit was lifted it was revived when there was a shower of snow dust he was revived and he got ready that now he is going to use his day i am not going to do waste my day i am going to use it in a constructive manner i am going to utilize my day the poem conveys a message that even a simple incident can be capable of pulling out a man from depression and change his outlook about how he sees the world now who was the savior in this poem the savior was nature okay the poet had decided that he is going to waste his day but who saved his day his day was saved by our beautiful nature now let's move forward now dust of snow we are going to do now we are going to do the poetic devices which are very important okay which are very important they can really come in your exam and you should be expert in poetic devices so first poetic device is assonance what is assonance the assonance is repetition the prominence of vowel sound yes the sound of vowel okay what are vowels vowels are a e i o u the sound words here the prominence of o can be seen shook down on me o is being repeated the sound of o is being repeated then enjambment the sentence is being continued to the next line without the use of any punctuation marks it has been used throughout the stanza yes we can see in the stanza is there any punctuation mark there is no comma there is no full stop the line is being continued from first line to second line then first to second then third to fourth we can see there is no punctuation mark this is called enjambment continuation from one line to another line without the use of punctuation mark now what's a metaphor 
metaphor the poet has compared the snowflakes with the dust in line 3 as we can see in line 3 he says the dust of snow what is dust of snow the particles of snow so here the metaphor is dust which is used to represent the particles of snow you know what is metaphor let me explain you metaphor metaphor is used when one noun is used to compare another noun but they do not have the exact same meaning okay they do not have the exact same meaning let me give you an example okay let me give you an example and i'll also explain you the difference between metaphor and simile metaphor and simile now what's a metaphor metaphor is if i say she is a feather she is a feather now i'm calling a girl a feather i'm referring her as a feather now a girl and feather they, they are not synonyms their meaning is not related but i'm comparing her to a feather by calling her a feather but what is simile if i had to use simile i would have said she is as light as a feather this is one way of using simile and the other way of using simile is she is like a feather she is like a feather these are the two examples of simile in simile we use as and like but in metaphor we do not use as and like we directly say that she is feather okay so this is your metaphor then comes imagery the poet has given the visual description of the whole stanza what is imagery you know imagery is when the poet tries to create a image in your mind using any of the five senses okay using any of the five senses the poet is trying to create an image in your mind you know whenever you are talking about a poem whenever you are listening a poem you're reading a poem you, you want that an image should be created in your mind now the poet has said the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree when you read the poem you actually feel that you can see it you can actually imagine a hemlock tree you can imagine a crow sitting on it and you can imagine that the crow is shaking down the particles of snow he is successful in creating an image in your mind okay so the imagery is used to create a visual description in your head okay now let's move further now contrast the poet has used two words crow and snow to show contrast the crow stands for something dark and to me while the snow stands for something light and pure now we should not get offended by it that the poet is comparing a dark thing and a white thing he is trying to create a visual depiction in your mind that a crow is dark because it's dark it's doomy whereas the color of snow is white that is why it represents purity so when a dark thing the crow when it shook down a pure thing on the poet it changed his mood now let's come to symbolism when something has been used as a symbol when something has been used as a symbol the hemlock tree is a poisonous tree which has been used as a symbol of death by the poet yes one of the symbol here is hemlock tree which is a symbol of death that has been used by the poet the crow has been used as a symbol of something inauspicious or something which can worsen a person's mood his poet was already uh, you know his mood was already very bad and the crow could have even you know not uplifted his mood but he could have you know worsen his mood but we know we all know that it was opposite as the crow is often regarded the ugliest of the animals 
now here do not get offended you know as i already told you that you should not get offended by the poet but yes the crow is considered to be the ugliest of all the animals whenever the crow comes the person people are not you know writing poems on the beauty of crows they are always writing on the beauty of doves okay or a sparrow or a linnet but they are never writing about the beauty of crow so here the poet has used this thing the, the he has also used the crow as a doomy symbol alliteration occurrence of same letter at the beginning of closely connected words alliteration what is alliteration alliteration is the repetition of consonant alphabet consonant has given my heart here h is being repeated okay the prominence of this h sound is can be seen here and saved some part s s has been repeated this consonant sound has been repeated that is why it's alliteration then cynic dosh the poet has mentioned that his heart was given a change of mood but it's not only his heart but his entire self who has been given a change of mood by dust of snow now before explaining this let me tell you what is cynic dosh cynic dosh is when you use a simple word to explain the whole okay when you use a particular word to explain the whole now let me give you an example for example we say the english one the match we say the english won the match is it only the english people who won the match the english team that was playing who won the match no whole england won the match but we have used english to represent england the whole england here also it was said that his heart was given a change was his heart only given a change no his whole body was changed his whole his whole mood was changed so heart is used as a whole for his whole body himself entire self okay so now the central theme of the poem which is very important one may have the worst day or time of his life but a little good thing can make it quite amazing yes the poet very beautifully describes that one thing that one may have the worst day that we may not be feeling very well but a simple thing can change your mind he is actually he's trying to motivate you that you should not you know feel down you should not you know uh, sit sorrowfully somewhere and you should not be in a pensive mood whenever you are in a pensive mood what should you do you should just get up yourself you should go in the lap of nature and you should look for something that can change your mood okay you should not sit like that only whole day you should not waste your day but instead you should go and find something that can change you okay now let's move further let's move to the second poem that is fire and ice fire and ice it is also a contrast these two things fire and ice they are quite opposite of each other fire and ice now let's talk about fire and ice we are going to have an overview then line by line explanation summary we are going to discuss the word meanings and the poetic devices the poem fire and ice is written by robert lee frost who was an american poet in this poem the poet mentions that both fire and ice are probable ends of this world now we can say that robert lee frost some students may think that robert lee frost is behaving like a sadist in this poem he is talking about the destruction of the earth but we can see that robert lee frost is so much frustrated with the bad things with the evils that are prevalent in the society that now he wants that the earth should be destroyed that earth should come to an end and how does he want that he is trying to explain in this beautiful poem again with the help of nature some say the world will end in fire 
some say in eyes from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire now you may think that why the poet is talking like a sadus why is he talking about the end of earth we are always talking about the end of earth right we have heard numerous number of rumors that the earth is going to end that the earth is going to be destructed and we have seen a lot of american movies we have seen a lot of movies on apocalypse where zombies come and destroy the whole earth we have also seen that the people now start living on mars and they are not living on uh, you know earth anymore or we have seen a lot of things now we are always talking about apocalypse what is apocalypse apocalypse you know na when the earth is getting destroyed you know according to stephen hawking the stephen hawking the famous scientist he says that the earth is actually going to end some day and what can be the reasons the reasons he explains is nuclear power he says that one of the method how the earth will end can be nuclear power everybody has nuclear power okay every uh, you know big uh, uh, countries have the nuclear power and they can use it okay some day he says that one day is going to come when one of the country is going to attack on the other country and then the other country is going to respond and then it there will be a nuclear war and the uh, earth is going to end in that he also says that what will happen artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is going to be so strong that it is going to take over all the human beings you know that artificial intelligence we can see artificial intelligence everywhere okay it is going to be so smart that it is going to control us and that can be the reason of our destruction but here our poet says that he wants that the earth should end in fire how he says from what i have tasted of desire he says that i have tasted desire i hold with those who favor fire why does he say so he says so because the people who have desire they are full of heat they are full of heat what is desire desire fire stands for desire greed lust everest okay desire greed lust everest the people who are full of these evils they have a lot of heat they want everything everything that comes in their way they want everything the people who have everest everest means they have excess need of money they are greedy we can see that people are quite greedy he says i hold with those who favor fire because it will explain in the next line but if i had to perish twice he says that if i had to perish twice if it had to perish means if it has to end twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice he says that ice is also good okay ice is also good because he knows enough of hate the people who hate the people who hate have a lot of hatred in them okay they have a lot of they have a cold heart okay they are stone hearted okay they have stone hearted he says that for such people they have so much coldness in their heart the people have so much cruelty in them how are cruel people how do we refer to the cru cruel people we say oh my god don't don't you have any warmth don't you have any warmth in yourself you are such a cold person how can you do this thing the people who murder other people the people who know who uh, actually humiliate the other people or they you know torture animals or they torture human beings what kind of people are those those people are those whose heart is filled with a lot of hatred he says for such people destruction with ice is also great and that would also suffice you know what happens with fire with fire everything destroys in a matter of seconds in a matter of seconds everything is destroyed you know when a forest fire occurs the fire takes everything you know it destroys everything that comes in its way but when we talk about ice the destruction is very slow 
So if we compare the destruction with ice and fire, the first thing to be compared is that with the fire, the destruction is quick. But if we talk about ice, the destruction is slow. It slowly kills the person. Now, let's do the summary. And in the summary, we will explain it better. In this poem, the poet refers to two predictions of how the world will end. It is a symbolic poem where the fire stands for desire, greed, fury, avarice and lust. Whereas the ice refers to cruelty, hatred, coldness, insensitivity and rigidity. Yes, it has been compared with quite the opposite things. But both these things, both the lists are evils of the society that actually exist in the hearts of people. Yes, there are a lot of people who have a lot of desire, they have greed and they can do anything to, you know, fulfill that. Whereas the people who are cruel, they have hatred, you know, you can just easily think that the people who, you know, hurt the other person, who have so much tendency that they can physically or mentally torture the other person, what goes in their mind? How cold hearted they are, how stone hearted they are, how rigid they are, they do not have any warmth. He has used the idea of two groups. He has divided the people into two groups who have their own explanation for the end of the world, who want the end to wor uh, world to end and they have their own explanation that how it is going to end. One group is of the opinion that the fire will destroy every possible thing in the world, that the fire is going to destroy everything in the world. The other is of the opinion that the ice will cover the whole earth and it will perish because of the extremely low temperatures. Yes. This can also happen when ice is going to take over, when everything is going to be in a low temperature, it is going to perish. Okay, it is going to perish. Both the components are compared with self-destructing human emotions, desire and hatred. You know, these are self-destructing. He has very beautifully explained, we can see in the summary, it is written self-destructing. The evils that exist in us cause self-destruction. They are so bad and they are so bad, they are bad for ourselves. Okay, if we have a lot of greed, if we have a lot of greed, if we have a lot of avarice, what will happen? We will be destroyed. Yes, a day will come when our greed is going to destroy us. Whereas if we have a lot of cruelty, that cruelty is one day going to be bad for us. It is going to be destructive for ourselves. Okay. Now, the poet is originally of the opinion that he has been very closely associated with the fiery desires and considers fire to be capable of bringing human beings to an end. He says, the poet is originally, first he says that the earth should end with fire because he is closely associated with fiery desires because he is also a human being. He's also a human being. He also has desires. He has also greed, avarice. He has a lot of evils in himself. So that is why he says that he considers fire to be capable of bringing human beings to an end. Fire can destroy the people who are already on the verge of destruction. Yes, who are already on the verge of destruction. Don't you feel that we are already on the verge of destruction? We have caused so much, you know, we have caused so much destruction to our own earth. We can see that we have hurted Mother Earth so much that one day she is going to take a revenge. And that is what the poet is saying here. But then he thinks that icy hatred is just capable of ending the world slowly and steadily. Therefore, if the earth has to end twice, ice is just as good as fire. He says that ice is just good as fire. If fire would lead to rapid and immediate destruction, as I told you, that fire will lead to rapid and immediate destruction, immediate result we are going to get. When, uh, you know, when fire starts, everything is destroyed. Everything that comes in its way is destroyed. Ice would lead to silent damage. Whereas ice would lead to silent damage. The people who are cold hearted, who are stone hearted should get the death also cold heartedly. Okay. They should be, uh, you know, killed with 
cold similarly if fire is pure passion ice is pure reason wow he is saying fire is pure passion ice is pure reason yes fire is pure passion when we compare fire with passion and ice is pure reason ice is pure reason means it is a good reason that the people who have cruelty in their hearts should be perished by ice does the poet very artistically depicts that if the humans don't control their emotions if they do not control their emotions and let them control us they will surely bring us to the verge of destruction now what does the poet want to say why what does he want to say he wants to say that if we do not control our emotions one day will come when our emotions will control us okay if we do not control our emotions our emotions take over us and they force us to do bad things okay for example if you are on a very strict diet you're not feeling well you are very unhealthy you know and the doctor tells you that beta you have this particular problem you should you are on a strict diet you should not consume uh, you know outside food but it is our you know greed that forces us Uh, no matter you know we should take something we should eat something from outside uh, what will happen okay and we you know our emotions are controlling us our emotions are saying okay you should eat something you know uh, it will not uh, you know bother your body so much and we does so we do that okay we break the rules human beings break rules we break rules on every moment of our life if we are sing, you know uh, standing on a signal on a signal we often cross the signal if we do not see a uh, traffic police if we do not see the traffic police we are bound to you know skip the signal because these are our emotions our emotions say koi baat nahi chalo let's do it and we do that okay but we should not do such things okay we should have control on our emotions now the fire and ice what is the theme of fire and ice desire hatred and power of emotions are the central themes of the poem yes these are the central themes of the poem if we do not control our desire and hatred what is going to happen the power of emotions if we do not understand the power of emotions we are definitely going to be destroyed yes because these are self destructing powers okay now poetic devices assonance prominent sound of a single vowel throughout the sentence yes prominent sound of a single vowel here the vowel is o i hold with those who favor fire now o we can see the prominence of o in this whole sentence okay alliteration as i told you it is the repetition of a letter at the start of closely placed words favor fire in favor fire we can see the repetition of f word in world will we can see the prominence of w the repetition of w can be seen okay similarly imagery as i already told you that it is used to make readers perceive things that involve their senses we perceive we try to make an image in our mind throughout the stanza we imagine things because of the strong visual elements we are imagining everything we are imagining okay what will happen if the earth ends in fire what will happen if the earth ends in ice so the poet is quite successful in creating a visual image in our mind the speaker also used words like some say tasted desire which again use our senses some say some say when he says some say so we try to hear okay somebody is saying that earth should end in fire or should end in ice he has said tasted desire tasted desire means he has used to, used his feeling of taste his tongue but he is uh, didn't actually taste fire but taste is used to represent to create an image in our mind which again use our senses anaphora anaphora is the repetition of a word at the start of two or more consecutive lines some say yes some say is repeated some say 
the world will end in fire some say in ice so some say is repeated twice so that is why it is anaphora okay in line 1 and 2 anaphora repetition of some say can be seen personification personification it means to give human qualities to inanimate objects when we give human qualities to inanimate objects in this poem the poet portrays that fire and ice are capable of destruction we have used like fire and ice are capable of uh, you know destruction we have used fire and ice like a person like a person who actually wants to end the earth who have mind who have you know the emotions to destroy the earth the poet is personifying <coughs> fire and ice sorry by giving it power to destroy anything and everything fire and ice have the capability to destroy anything and everything now enjambment it is defined as a clause that does not come to an end at a line break and keeps moving over to the next line as i already explained in uh, in the case of dust and snow we can say that no punctuation marks has been used no punctuation marks have been used in the continuation of lines when the line in the poem is being continued to the second line and to the third line without the use of punctuation marks it is enjambment now enjambment uh okay enjambment has been explained from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire there is no punctuation mark in it symbolism the word fire has been used as a symbol of desire the word fire has been used as a symbol of desire the phrase the end of the word here we can see the word fire end of the word and ice they have been used to create a symbol they are used as a symbol now end of the world is used for self destruction fire is used to describe desire and ice has been used as a symbol of hatred i already told you that symbolism means when symbolical symbolical representation is used a symbol is used the word directly is not being used here we can say that desire word is not used but fire is the symbol of that okay i hope you understood metaphor the poet compares fire with desire and ice with hatred metaphor as i already told you metaphor is a comparison word and here fire is compared with desire and ice is being compared with hatred now we have completed both these beautiful poems written by robert lee frost it has explained us the love of nature it has also explained us the fury of nature how nature can be so loving and how nature can be so destructive okay now let's end this class thank you so much bacho it was a lovely session we'll meet in the next class till then bye bye